Okay. Well, today we are going to demonstrate intradiscal biologics. And we have a mixing device, and this is from uh, Vivex that makes the via disc. And I'll put it here so we can see that. And the via disc is a mixture of uh, cellular liquid, about a cc, with micronized disc material. And so this is placed in an intervertebral disc to augment the tissue that's lost with degenerative disc disease that is producing discogenic back pain. So what we'll do is we'll demonstrate this. I'll demonstrate the mixing first. So this is the container that the micronized disc comes in. This doesn't have any in it for obvious reasons. Uh, this is uh, generated from a donated cadaver that has the disc taken removed along with the end plates. This is ground to 300 micron aliquots and there's 0.75 cc's in here. So this will come shipped in a sterile container. This container is opened and the first step is the saline and there'll be a cc of saline that will be injected in the container, just like this. And then the mixing will occur like this for 30 seconds and this is a rotary mixer and the bottom part is gears, the top part is a container that will contain the combination of micronized disc material and the saline. This is followed by injection of the cellular material. Uh, six million cells derived from the hypoxic region of bone marrow adjacent to the discs and newly donated bodies that are donated to the tissue bank. And after this is applied, this is mixed for another 30 seconds. And after this, this is withdrawn and placed in the syringe. So I abbreviated the mixing times, obviously. And so this is placed in a syringe. And this is about the consistency of a thin paste. And this is in injected through a 22 gauge spinal needle. So with that, we'll come in and we'll do <clears throat> the injection and the intervertebral disc is accessed with nothing more than a, thank you, than a 22 gauge needle. I have a little bend on my needle to exaggerate the steering capability much as we've seen in many of the needles that we have been shown today. I think that's about the, the right level. Let's go up a, a bit. Let's go up a bit. Okay, we'll pick this uh, disc. Go ahead and arc about 30 degrees toward you. And the goal is simple disc access, right? So that's good. So the same as, as discography. So there we go. So we will place the needle. This is a simple 22 gauge needle injected directly into the disc. And ideally you'd like to come in contact with the SAP, the superior articular process. Because I've abandoned my needle, I'll go around the SAP and direct the needle tip back centrally. And that looks pretty good here. So what I'd like to do is come back and take an AP shot. And we don't use any contrast whenever injecting 
the, the cellular allograft into the disc. So a little bit short on my needle, this is a three and a half, but we will make sure it's in the center portion of the disc and let's look lateral. And so without contrast, you have to make sure you're in the center portion of the disc before you inject the material. This has to be uh, appropriately located in the area of the nucleus pulposus. And we know the nucleus pulposus is in the center two-thirds of the disc. And so this is absolutely appropriately located. I will push it in and tint the skin just to keep the right dead center of the disc. We'll take the mixture of micronized disc material and uh, the cellular material and we will inject it directly into the disc. The BAST trial that's, uh, that has been submitted for publication is characterized as the pain and functional improvements and they have been impressive. So I'm gonna inject this, I'll take a shot before we inject. I'll inject the material. Shot after we inject, needle removed, and that is it. The average procedure time on this is roughly about five and a half minutes for a single disc and eight minutes for two levels is what uh, the, the VAST trial told us about the amount of time that it takes to do this. So again, this will come contained, the allograft will come contained. The liquid, the saline, the cellular material is added after this and drawn up and it's all sterile packaging. This thing will all be a sterile container shipped separately. And the, uh, the cellular material is shipped at minus 70 degrees, similar to all uh, biologic material. And after this is injected, uh, it's, in it's injected one or two levels. It's been tested for one or two levels. And uh, the, we'll get an idea about the pain and functional improvements. I have a sneak peek on that since I was a PI for the VAST trial. But this is done primarily, average age of people is uh, 42.5. Uh, uh, so it tends to be younger, healthy people suffering from discogenic back pain with internal disc disruption. So this is a, it for the biologics. A portion of this intradiscal simple disc injection, just like you do discography or any other intradiscal access. And that's it. Questions, comments? Hey, Doug, uh, this is Neil. Yes. Uh, uh, what time frame do you let? Uh, occur between uh, discography and uh, treatment? So that's a good question. We always want to make sure and not put anything in the disc that would compromise the disc too much. So there's some degree of controversy about whether or not you even perform discography. Does this accelerate degenerative disc disease? Uh, we don't hesitate at all because our next step is to inject intradiscal biologics. So if we know we have a treatment, we go ahead and perform discography. We wait, uh, and when performing discography, we inject a couple, two different things. One is, is contrast, non-ionic contrast, and the other one is an anesthetic, and I use 4% uh, uh, lidocaine, one cc of 4% lidocaine. So we get the provocative discography. Yes, it reproduces the patient's pain. We get an anesthetic discography. Yes, it decreases their pain. And if this is the case, then we wait uh, two weeks prior to injecting the biologic. So we don't do it at the same time. We wait two weeks, and the two weeks is somewhat arbitrary. This is what we think may be the case. There's, there's some degree of evidence that just the injection of contrast has an effect on some of the bacteria. It's a, you know, it, can, it can be bacteriostatic. Uh, it can be, and it can have some, uh, there's loose evidence that it can, uh, possibly even the action of the discography have some effect on the cells. But by convention, just by design, we've waited two weeks before the injection of the biologic material. And whether or not that makes a difference, this is an area that will need to be uh, looked at 
and evaluate it further. My guess is it probably doesn't make any difference, but that's by convention what we do currently. So inject, discography, provocative, anesthetic, two-week waiting time, injection of biologics. How far, uh, how long after the uh, injection is done uh, do we see some results uh, in the patients? Yeah, it's a good question. So typically after the injection, we get about five to 7% of the patients will have pain. So, uh, you know, a certain portion of these, um, uh, 15, 20% up to, will have, will, uh, will have pain. So, um, you know, this five to 7% of people will have fairly significant pain. Up to 20% of people will have some unusual feeling. So maybe I feel full, uh, maybe my back hurts in a minor discomfort that doesn't really make me complain too much. Uh, a certain portion will have at least moderate pain, and that's about 5 to 7%. Patients start feeling better at about a month. A month afterwards, they start feeling better. That uh, uh, change, the, the positive effect, uh, maximizes at about month six and appears to be durable. We had the VAS trial that tested it out for a year, and the durability is still ongoing. We have some of the extension trial that we're uh, following up for two to three years, but it looks like after the biologics injection, it, the time frame for the patient to start feeling better is about four weeks. And the maximizing, the, the, the time point where the, the benefits in terms of pain function, quality of life are maximized appear to be about month six. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, question from the audience was, uh, of course, the, the, what company was, was it? Uh, it was Vivex. Uh, can you comment on the approximate cost of the biologic? So the company that makes it is Vivex. They're run out of the Miami Tissue Bank in, uh, in Miami, Dade County. Uh, they have a large catchment area, so they catch uh, about it's about eight million people, and th these this bi these biologics are processed according to American Tissue Bank uh, protocols. They're tested for everything possible, um, and this has been distributed and commercialized. I have the capability of doing this. This is not reimbursed currently. Uh, there's category three coding that's been awarded. Category one coding has been applied for. Uh, this the papers are being. Uh, put out from the VAS trial, and there's various and sundry other efforts to get the appropriate publications and document everything for successful Category 1 coding. So that hasn't happened yet and probably will ha happen within the next uh, year to three years, somewhere in that range. Uh, I don't have a good grasp on how much this product is uh, cost. It, it is not cheap. It's made from a uh, human disc, and it's made from uh, cells that are taken from the hypoxic region of the bone marrow adjacent to the end plate. So just like any other resource, it's finite, it's somewhat scarce, even though there's Miami Tissue Bank is a very large tissue bank. It's one of the best tissue banks I've ever uh, visited. It, but yet this material is, this resource is finite. So this tends to be expensive, and I hesitate to t say exactly how much because the price that I've paid for Viadisc has, has, uh, has, has changed over time. It's becoming slightly less expensive, but it still remains pricey. Excellent. Thank you. I want to question the audience also is, do you measure interdiscal pressures during detography, or is this done manually? No, I don't do, uh, uh, primarily I, I do just for pro provocative pain response. Um, I do measure pressure sometimes if I think the pressure will exceed, if, it, if the disc is, let's say, uh, modified ferrimin grade four, if the nucleus is relatively intact, then I will measure pressure because I don't want the pressures to go up over, at or over 100 PSI. Uh, we typically, um, I respond just with a small amount of contrast injection. I don't really try to pressurize the disc to, a significant degree, and I rely on not only the provocative injection of contrast, but also the anesthetic. If I inject one cc of 4% lidocaine into the disc and demonstrate that there's no contrast coming out of the disc or other fluid coming out of the disc and the pain goes away, I have a high degree of certainty that that pain is coming from the disc. 
Okay, excellent. I know Neil had another question. Uh, this is kind of a working population, and uh, is there kind of a, work, a return to work uh, protocol that you have? All right, so I don't put any functional limitations on these people. I don't brace them. I don't do anything in particular post-procedure. I will start physical therapy on most of my patients at six weeks out. Uh, but this patient population, it, on the average, is, is little, between 42 and 43 years old. They're, on the average, their BMI is about 27 to 28 in that range. So they tend to be young, uh, healthy, relatively fit patients that you can start back immediately. So the back to work protocol on the patients that are still working is I let them go to back to work whenever they're able. And that varies according to the response to the injection. The vast majority of people don't have any pain and they don't have any, any type of adverse effects from the injection. A portion of them will have some, about between a quarter and a fifth of them will have some degree of discomfort, some type of unusual sensation they didn't have before. And about five to seven percent will have at least moderate pain. And we, we, we know this, anytime we inject into the disc, this is a cellular allograft. This is similar to a thin paste being injected in there, and it provides, based on biomechanical testing, structural support. So this tends to structurally augment the inside of the disc. And given the fact that it provides structural support, it can also cause some type of structural change inside the disc that presumably is the, the reason why some patients have uh, either pain or some feeling of fullness after the injection. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that presentation, Doug. That's excellent. Appreciate it.